Hello, my name is Brendel Davis. My father is the late Reverend Isaac M. Davis. My mother is the late Mrs. Edmonia Hayes Davis. My father was the son of the late Reverend John Isaac Alexander Weeks, who migrated from Barbados to Crochetville, Liberia. My father was a very knowledgeable man. He was very motivating. He was loved by all of us. He was extremely funny. He made us laugh so often. He was humble. Um, my father felt indebted to us, especially when it came to spirituality. Uh, uh, going to church, reading the Bible, praying, singing hymns. We did sing hymns in church and also at home. He was just a loving one of a kind daddy. Um, my favorite time um, going to Christianville was especially singing in the choir. Um, I sang alto and um, Cousin Comfort Goodrich was our choir director. And she was very forceful in us learning um, the songs that we had to sing, you know, whether they were anthems or um, um, hymns um, um, for um, church service. Um, I remember going to my grandfather's house after church. Um, I remember climbing the tree, guava tree. I remember him um, coming out and yelling at us to get out of the tree. If not, um, at, at one time he was gonna shoot us out of the tree, which we know he was really kidding. But as children, we all jumped down and ran. Um, so those were fun times. I remember um, after service, we would go to Cousin Comfort Goodrich and Cousin Jonathan Goodrich house and um, have a wonderful time. Um, one of the favorite meal that was served was um, cow food gravy and cabbage and rice. And that was absolutely scrumptious. So going to Crochetville was fun. Um, so most of our time, as I say, in Crochetville was spent in church, um, waiting, um, especially after church for the board meeting, which lasted for a long time. And as children, we became reckless, hungry, uh, wanted to get out of church and go home, especially to Cousin Comfort House to eat that delicious, um, cow food gravy and cabbage. So those were memorable moments that, you know, really lasted with me. Mm -hmm. After returning home from Abidjan, Ivory Coast, um, my father uh, pushed us to learn how to speak English. And part of what um, really helped us was uh, he setting us down, especially um, Saturday evenings and Sunday evenings after, after returning home from Crochetville, we had to read the Bible. And he sat with us patiently and um, he taught us. He felt kind of indebted to us, um, especially when it came to our spiritual growth. And reading the Bible, understanding the Bible was part of that spiritual growth. Um, actually, uh, week, weekdays, not only weekends, but after daddy returns home from work or we return home, I mean, um, at Saturday evening, um, he will call all of us, the six children, and tell us to put our food together, join him in this big dishpan, and we will put, you know, empty our, our individual uh, meal, our food into the dishpan, and stir it up, and all six of us with, with our daddy we start eating. Um, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, it was funny. It was hilarious because daddy made a lot of jokes. You know, don't take this chicken. Oh, you just took that piece of meat. So no more meat for you. You know, and that piece of meat is for Brenda or that piece of meat is for Varita. So it was just so, so loving. Um, and praying, praying. Daddy uh, made sure that every Every evening, we said family prayer. Um, Sunday mornings, prior to leaving for church, was family prayer as well. Um, 
Saturday evening, of course, I was the one that took care of his pastoral um, shirt. Um, I had to iron his shirt, make sure it was starched, make um, it was starched and make sure it was ironed um, and hanging up in his bedroom for church on Sunday. Um, so, you know, there was there were absolutely loving memories that um, will last with me forever, but my wonderful, wonderful kind daddy. So my father graduated from Liberia, Liberia College. Um, and I believe um, after graduation, he got employment with the American Embassy in Monrovia. And after after he left his tenure there, he was employed with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as a diplomat to the um, um, Ivory Coast. And there he served as first vice consul to the ambassador. He also served many times as acting ambassador. Um, after daddy's tenure in um, the foreign service, um, he returned to Liberia and joined the ministry. And while in the ministry, Daddy served as the district superintendent for the St. Paul River District. He also served as elder um, in the church. He acted bishop of the United Methodist Church of Liberia. Um, he traveled extensively to um, various conferences, even in the United States and um, in Africa. Um, Daddy pastored so many churches, including Reeves Memorial Methodist Church and Burnsville's United Methodist Church in Broville. As a young, young, young girl, I remember after it, it has rained, heavy rain, um, a lot of plums will fall. And um, I remember we running underneath the tree with our buckets or our little pan and putting plums in who could get the most plum in their, their, their bowl or, or, or bucket um, was very successful because then you had to, you know, of course, share it with mommy and daddy. And many times with simple mommy, you got to buy it or daddy, you, you have to buy it. And I remember they would take like, you know, the five cents or one cent or whatever and pay for it. So that allowed us to run next door and buy ice cream or buy candy. So those were memorable moments. So my favorite fruit um, as a child was plum. My mother was a very quiet woman, kind of sort of introverted. Um, mommy didn't talk much, um, but mommy was one of the most loving mothers that any, any child could ever ask for. She was very uh, compassionate. She was very understanding. Um, she tolerated, she tolerated a lot from us. Um, she was kind, she was gentle. Um, mommy never really punished us. She always referred the punishment to daddy who was the punisher, <laughs> you know, give her little spanking and so forth. Um, mommy was a member of the fraternity organization. For example, she was um, past Grand Princess of the Eastern Star. She also served her church. Um, my, my grandfather, uh, my, 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 my mother's father, my grandfather, name was Jesse Oliver Hayes. Um, my grandmother's name was Mary Louise Hayes. Um, they both lived in Bravo. They both were very staunch Baptist, um, you know, churchgoers. Um, my grandfather was an educator. He was a teacher. My grandmother was a stay-at-home mom. M my grandfather, um, Jesse Oliver Hayes, um, and Mr. Kerry Thomas um, were very good friends. Friend. They were both members of Baptist Church, Zion Grove Baptist Church in Broville. My grandfather, Jesse Oliver Hayes, and Mr. H. Kerry Thomas were, amongst others, were the first graduates from 
Black Heritage Baptist Mission in Broville. I remember two of, of uh, my father's favorite songs um, were Just As I Am and Amazing Grace. Prior to preaching, we always sang one of those hymns. Um, my sister, Virita, and I sang together as the Davis sisters. And um, the most favorable song that my father loved was Daddy Was an Old Time Preacher Man. And we sang that song so often. It became the anthem for my father. You know, many times he would go to um, other churches as guest preacher. And daddy would take his two girls with him. And before he started preaching, Virita and I had to bail out. Daddy was an old time preacher man. And I remember vividly hear him exclaim, Amen. And then he would walk up the pulpit and start preaching. So um, I came to America 1978 had never physically experienced snow. Um, of course, I had seen snow in movies and on TV and so forth in Liberia. But my experience um, physically seeing and touching snow was incredible. Because of my excitement, I decided to write um, a letter to my father, which ended up being almost a book. Um, explaining my experience, you know, with um, seeing, you know, touching, walking bare feet in the snow. And I remember vividly, daddy was very happy. Mommy and daddy were very happy when they received my letter, my book, as daddy called it. And my father decided to correct my spelling, my vocabulary. He crossed every T and dotted every I and mailed my letter back to me from Liberia. And of course, I was not very happy about that. <laughs> so coming to America was a great, great ex experience. Um, I remember um, after leaving Western Virginia, um, and this is when the war broke out, so everyone had to disperse and, you know, find some place to know. So after leaving Western Virginia, um, I stayed in New York for about two months, and then I came to Rhode Island and um, have been here since then. My greatest teacher were my parents. My, my, my parents helped me to build my life foundation. Um, it is because of them that I am who I am today. Um, I remember the corrections. I remember the spanking. Back then, I didn't understand. And I remember vividly um, daddy saying to us, Piggy, one day you will understand why daddy spanked you. I remember um, there were parties or not dances that went on in Broville. And we would ask daddy sincerely, Daddy, can I go to the dance? And he would say, Piggy, y'all go ask your ma, yeah? So we would go to mommy and ask, I mean, well, he would say, if your mom said yes, then I'll say yes. So excited, we would go to mommy and ask her, you know, uh, or tell her that daddy has agreed for us to go to the dance. And mommy, daddy said, if you say yes, then he says yes. Mommy would say, children, don't go to your pa and ask him. You okay? And you, so it was back and forth until it was time to go to bed. I remember daddy would come to us and say, look, piggies, daddy love your yeah. Daddy is not tired looking at your face. So come and give daddy a kiss. And by then we are crying, boiling. I would, no, we don't want. So those were sweet memories that I remember. But my father was humble, like my mother. My father was the di disciplinarian, not so much of mommy. My father... Um, taught us about reading. Reading was very important. I remember when we started reading English, 
um, an understanding English or understanding what we read. Daddy introduced us, or especially me, to uh, books um, on um, um, communist leaders. Um, you know, uh, for example, um, the communist, the chi China um, Communist Party. I don't know why he was interested in that, but um, he would give me books on um, um, the, you know, the um, communist leader Kim Il Sung or Chu on Life. So all of those names stuck with me. And uh, Mao Zedong was one of the um, communist leader. And I remember daddy will actually assign those books uh, to me and my brother, you know, to read. And after we have supposedly read them, we had to have an open discussion with him. And he would ask us questions and we would have to ask daddy questions. So those were those were memories that, of course, has have have never left me, um, and so my father was one of a kind. Um, he spanked us, he corrected us, but as he said, it was all because he loved us so much. <laughs> my favorite Liberian food is soup and rice. You can get me soup and rice any day. Make sure it's fish soup. Oh my God, I go to town. <laughs> My father's mother was from Bassa. Um, I don't know much about her because uh, she died um, at a young age. Um, I think we were in the Ivory Coast when my grandmother passed. Um, but daddy, daddy spoke Bassa fluently. And he never really spoke Bassa with us. Uh, but, you know, there were one or two words that we learned from him. But, um, yeah, he spoke best so fluently. I rem as, as a child, I remember Daddy, um, you know, talking quite a bit about his mother. Um, Daddy loved his mother. Um, Daddy, Daddy um, left his mother at a very young age. I think at the age, I, I think it was at the age of five, five years old, when grandpa went to Bassa and brought daddy to Cushaville. So um, he did go back to Bassa a few times to visit his mother, but most of the time that um, he visited his mother, we were in the Ivory Coast and it was like um, uh, a visit to Liberia, whether it was a visit about work, but he always um, did go to Bassa, he loved, love, love his maternal, maternal roots. He absolutely embraced that. Um, even so, he named Varita, my sister, Marie. Daddy told us um, a story um, about um, he, Uncle Jeff and Uncle Anthony um, not completing the evening work. And I believe the evening work was to draw water from, bring water back from the creek. And um, he said, you know, they were playing um, and did not complete the work. So grandpa waited until about one o'clock in the morning and woke them up. And there was a body in the church. And back then the body, you know, uh, lays on the cooling board. I think there were two candles. Um, and they knew that there was a body in the church. Now, Grandpa House is in such close proximity to the church that when you walk out of the, the back door and look at the church, you can see whatever or whoever in the church. And so um, he uh, uh, woke them up deliberately around one o'clock in the morning and told them, get up and you'll go to the creek and bring some water back. And daddy said he had never been as frightening as he was that night. Uncle Anthony um, wanted to remain in the middle. So now there are three, three, three boys. Uncle Anthony wanted to be in the middle. Daddy wanted to be in the middle. And uh, Uncle Jeff wanted to be in the middle. So who will walk in the front and who will walk in the back was the issue. Daddy said, and um, Grandpa refused for them to carry any lantern 
a candle. They have to go walk in the dark. And there the body is in a church on a cooling board. Daddy said, children, he said, I was so scared. Anyway, they had to go retrieve the water and bring it back. And another another story he told us about grandpa was that um, um, grandpa um, shoes were at a cobbler and he had black shoes, the black um, shoes for church. And um, the cobbler had not completed um, fixing grandpa's shoes and grandpa needed his shoes for church um, Sunday morning. Anyway, so he called one of the boys and told them to bring the black shoe polish, which of course they did bring it. And grandpa proceeded to polish his feet black and went to church, preached his sermon, with his feet painted black. So those were memories that um, daddy, you know, sat and told us. Father gave me a, a, a solid foundation. Um, my father taught me how to be kind, how to be responsible, how to motivate myself. Um, um, my father was very knowledgeable. So he would sit with us um, and have open discussion. Like I say, read a lot of books and have, you know, dialogue with him. Um, my father taught me, well, how to be respectful of other people, how to appreciate life as a whole. Um, he, um, he gave me such an important spiritual understanding that uh, is, you know, what is guiding me. Uh, my life journey has depended on that. And so he, again, was so instrumental in my development um, as an infant, uh, building my life foundation. And I know because of he and mommy, I have a solid foundation. So um, I remember as a little girl, um, mostly my grandmother, my father, yes, we did go to revival in Cushaville, um, but it was mostly my grandmother that took us to prayer meetings because um, she was president of the Monday afternoon prayer band in Broville. So she took us to Terry's. She took us to... Um, prayer meetings with her. So she took us to revivals and that's where I was saved. I remember going to Terry's. Um, we had to tie our hair with white hair tie um, because it was, you know, customary. You couldn't just go with your hair um, open. And also we had to protect our, our hair from the dew, you know, so that was one of the main reasons why we had to tie our hair because coming from from back home, from Terry, um, early morning, my grandmother always said the dew is falling, so you need to cover your heads. Um, when we went to, whenever we went to church, whether it was um, a prayer, prayer meeting um, or Terry, we had to cover our head. Whether it was just with a, a hat or a little dolly on your hair, but you absolutely couldn't go into church with your hair uncovered. So that was very important. Um, and at Terry, at Terry, uh, from my perspective, at Terry is a song and worship. Um, you know, uh, you stayed up, you, you, you stayed up and you sang and you testified whether it was, um, a good deed that came into your life. You shared it with your brothers and sisters um, and they shared this as well. Or whether there was um, um, a family member that was not well, um, you asked for prayer and everybody would lay their hands on you and pray um, uh, for your family member that could not attend uh, the program. Um, and so, um, a tarry will let her, I believe, around six o'clock in the morning. And that's when you, well, one important fact, you had to fast 
um, you know, fast uh, before or during the tarry. And then everyone broke the fast. I believe it was around six o'clock in the morning with homemade biscuits or shut bread or sandwiches, uh, whatever, you know, it was egg filling or um, tuna fish and mayonnaise. I remember that vividly. Um, and you had coffee or water or tea. So that's what you broke your fast with. And then um, the blessing would follow and everyone would go home. So that's what a tarry uh, in Liberia, that's my, uh, you know, description of what a tarry is. Religion is, uh, from my understanding, um, it, it, religion um, supposedly cleanses um, after you have re accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, um, my grandmother would say you feel joy in your heart. Um, and when, when you feel that outburst of joy in your heart, um, that, that, that uh, indicates you have accepted God as your Lord and Savior. And a lot of people start shouting, shouting, in other words, praising God loudly. Um, and they will hug you, your, your parents or, you know, church members will hug you and welcome you into the Christian family because, um, their understanding when you start shouting and praising God and rejoicing, hallelujah, and so forth, um, their, their understanding is that you have accepted God, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So that's what revival is all about, praying, praying, asking God to accept you, asking God for forgiveness, um, asking God to save you, save you, save you, and believing that you are saved, believing that um, God um, not necessarily has entered because God is in everyone, but just the joy of accepting God as your Lord and Savior is the main reason why, you know, you go to, to uh, revival and get, as they call it, the Muna's bench and, um, and, and, and pray and worship God and praise God and accept God for who God is part of you and you part of God. Mommy and daddy will want to be remembered as um, servants of God, one, because um, they instilled that in us. That was part of our daily grinding. Um, you are children, you are a child of God. Um, mommy and daddy would want to be remembered as good, honorable parents. They, they were teachers. They were our teachers. Um, they were um, so instrumental in our foundation being solid. They want to be remembered as loving, as, um, as sweet teachers um, came into this world, um, not only to teach us, their children, though, but to also teach other, 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 other children. I, re I remember quite a few of the um, um, Methodist ministers uh, with, were taught under daddy um, and they love him. 